This is an introduction to stream-based I.O. in Java. So stream-based I.O., which is located in the package uh, java.io, is the uh, original and still much used way to get data into and out of a Java program. So there are two different APIs, uh, two different stream-based APIs in the Java I.O. package. The first is the input stream, output stream API. Uh, which handles raw bytes. So there are many input streams to get data into the program and out many output streams to get data out of the program. The other API is the read the writer API which handles characters, text-based I.O. So there are reader streams to get data into the program and writer streams to get data out of the program. An important feature is that all APIs, the input stream, output stream and reader writer APIs, uh, allow streams to be chained to each other in a pipe. So this is in fact an implementation of the decorator design pattern, if, there's, if anyone is very much interested in design patterns. So what it means is that each of the streams, so these uh, symbols are the classes, of the, the different streams, like for example um, file input stream, buffered input stream and so on. And they all implement the same interface. Let's write an interface. Let's say that this is the input stream API, so then we have the input stream interface. And all the input stream uh, classes implement this interface, so maybe it's the file input stream, the socket input stream, the buffered input stream and uh, some other input stream. And each of them in their constructor can take a reference to an implementation of the interface. So that means any of those streams can uh, uh, wrap, have a reference to any other of the streams. And as a result, I if we have some input stream here, data is flowing in, for example, from a file, and this is the file input stream then, then we, we can chain, uh, for example, the buffer input stream to that one by simply passing the file input stream to the buffered input streams constructor. So data will continue that way. Uh, and we can chain any number of streams this way, each stream um, providing its own functionality uh, and data eventually flows out into the program. So the program will make uh, calls to the uh, in, in innermost stream, that's the object that is referred fr from the program, Th that stream will uh, call uh, st other streams before in, in the chain. And so uh, they will all provide their functionality. Uh, so let's have a look at some of the streams in the Java, uh, Java IO API documentation. So this here we can see the classes. Uh, so for example, there's the buffered input and buffered output streams. Using those, you can uh, handle um, chunks of data instead of individual bytes. Then there is uh, a, there are corresponding uh, streams for the reader-writer API, buffered reader, buffered writer. So remember, reader-writer is for handling text-based I.O. and input stream, output stream is for handling byte-based I.O. Uh, we have the byte array input stream and byte array output stream, which reads data to and from a byte array in memory. A corresponding reader writer set, char array reader and char array writer, that handles a character array in memory. There is the data input stream and data output stream, that handles uh, primitive types of data. Has they have methods for reading and writing ints, booleans, and, and so on. There is the file input and file output stream uh, uh, that reads to uh, bytes to or from um, a file, a corresponding reader-writer set, file reader, file writer that passes characters to or from the file. Yeah, and so on. There are many different uh, str uh, streams, as you can see. Uh, interesting is, for example, object input stream and object output stream that can be used to store entire object graphs. You just pass an object to object output stream and it will be sen uh, saved in a serialized representation. Not just that object, but uh, also objects referenced by that object. And then you can use the object input stream to get the same object back from the stream. So, uh, for example, and including all its referenced object. 
So you can use object output stream to send a, a plain Java object o over the network, for example, uh, and then on the other um, receiving side, read it from the input stream of that network connection and uh, recreate uh, the same object graph with just one method call at each end. Yes, and there are many more uh, streams, as you can see. And remember, they can all be chained to each other. That is, uh, readers can be chained to readers, writers to writers, input streams to input streams, output streams to output streams. Uh, um, but there is also the uh, output stream writer and input stream reader. Those are, are uh, provide the functionality to translate between the input stream output stream API and the reader writer API. Now it's time for a first example. So um, uh, here in this little code there is uh, a stream used to read from a socket. So sockets will be introduced in the in, uh, coming presentation. But uh, for now uh, let's just say that the, the socket is an endpoint to, for a network connection and um, can be used to retrieve data that was sent from, from over the network to this uh, program. So we call the get input stream method of the socket to get the input stream that we can use to read the data sent to this network connection. We wrap it in an input stream reader. Note that the input stream from the socket is passed here to the constructor of the input stream reader. So the input stream reader, as I said previously, translates uh, the byte-based input stream API to the character-based reader API. Then we pass that uh, stream to the constructor of the buffered reader. And the buffered reader adds the functionality to read uh, to read the chunks of characters, not just single characters. In particular, the buffered reader, which is stored in the variable r, has the method readLine that can be used to, to read all characters up to a new line, which is uh, very useful. So we do that, read uh, one line of characters, and uh, store the, the red line in the string str. And um, this read line method will return null if there is nothing more to read. Uh, but uh, so that's the check here. Um, if there is nothing more to read, uh, we quit the, the while loop. If there was something to read, enter the while loop and process the data. So that's first uh, simple usage of input streams to uh, read from a socket. Another interesting thing with this little program uh, is the uh, catch block here. So many of the uh, stream methods and constructors uh, throw uh, IO exception, which is a checked exception, mean, meaning you have to try to uh, catch it in catch blocks or declare it, declare it to be thrown. Uh, sometimes one might get tired of that, in particular since there's often nothing to do. If we get the IO exception, the program is doomed anyway. So uh, as kind of uh, facilitate programming, we can wrap the IO exception in an unchecked IO exception like this. Uh, and the unchecked IO exception is of course unchecked, meaning we don't have to declare it in throws or catch blocks uh, in, in any other methods in the call chain. That was all about the uh, basic streams in the Java IO package. But um, before we look at a bigger and more interesting program example, let's also uh, have a brief look at file handling. So there are uh, three important classes for handling files in uh, the JDK. The first is the Java IO file, which has been around since beginning of Java. Uh, and let's have a look in the Java doc. So Java IO file. So you can see it has methods for file handling, compare files, check permissions, create file, delete file, and list files in a directory, create directory, and, and so on. Typical file handling. Then there are some, there's a, a newer version in the in the NIO, uh, Java NIO package, Java NIO file files. So we'll be talking a lot more about the NIO package in, in coming presentation. It's a uh, later I, IO uh, API 
um, in in some sense completing and in some sense replacing the Java IO package. But the Java IO package, neither the streams nor the file, is in no mean uh, by no means obsolete. They are still very much used and very very useful. Okay, but now let's have a look at the Java Java IO file files. So it also uh, contains methods for uh, file handling. Generally, uh, the NIO uh, package is faster than the uh, IO package because the, the NIO package makes use of native operating system uh, uh, functions as opposed to the Java IO, which is more pure in Java. So here we can see uh, methods for copying files, creating directories, creating files, creating soft links, uh, temporary files, delete file, and so on. So it also has methods for file handling. And as you can see, uh, the uh, location of, of um, file is identified by instances of the path class. So to be able to use the Java Nio file, file class, we must uh, create instances of path uh, class sy symbolizing file or directory location. And that is done uh, not with the, the path constructor. Actually, path, as you can see here, is an interface. But instead, we use the paths uh, file, which has static methods for creating path instances. So, for example, this get mo get method creates a path in indicating uh, uh, a file or directory with at this location, uh, which stays in this location.